What's going on, Jimmy? Keep that energy going, y'all. Everybody, clap it up, everybody, everybody. Man, that makes me feel good. It makes me feel real good. Because my big ass don't have to keep running back and forth on the stage. Whew, out of breath already. Round of applause, you go work out again? Round of applause. That was 18 people in a crowd of 150. That's a damn shame. I go work out, and I know you hear a lot about people talk about working out, and they always talk about naked old women and old men in the gym. That's disgusting. I'm not going to bring it up. What I am going to tell you is what happened to me. I was sitting in the locker room just after working out, yeah. and a really big black guy walked, walked up, up to me. Big like he just got out of prison. Big like he worked out in prison to keep people up off him, big. Big like Michael Clark Duncan in the Green Mile, big. Basically big for no apparent goddamn reason. <laughs> walked up on me while I was sitting down and was like, hey, big man, I know you don't know me, but, uh, do you have a little bit of moisturizer I can borrow just a damn? <laughs> First of all, what grown man asked another grown man for moisturizer? You asked me for lotion. And I said if I had it, I was gonna give it to you. But that's what you asked me for. Then you said, can you borrow just a damn? How in the hell was you planning on paying me back? <laughs> I said, you know what? I don't even take this. I got a sweaty, funky, and all. Went home, took the shower, scrubbed myself in the corner like a rape victim in the crime game because I felt really violated right then and there. <laughs> but I do work out and have myself a personal trainer. And that's cool, but never knowing that everything a personal trainer would have you do make you feel like you're ready to compete in a damn dog show. <laughs> Because if you have watched the dog show, they have the dog do a succession of events. Well, my personal trainer is, Jay, jump up on this box, climb down here, now pull on these ropes, run real fast, prance like this. What the hell does that have to do with my weight loss? <laughs> All I know is for my past two sessions, I've won best in show. <laughs> I got a pretty blue bow at home and everything. And personal trainers, they want to find out where your health level starts out at. Because if you die, the gym's not going to assure you. <laughs> so they put you on a heart rate monitor. Now, I'm from the hood. I never knew what the hell a heart rate monitor was. I thought it was just a watch. Turns out it's a watch and a strap that goes around this region. And I found out I'm a 52 double D in heart rate monitors. <laughs> yeah, I had them double check me over Victoria's Secrets. And they looked at me kind of weird when I asked them to check my cup size. A man my size walking in the door talking about, can you measure me out the semi annual collection, please? <laughs> no, please, turn to page 26. He looking at me like, is he really cupping his titty? I'm right up under the breast, sir. <laughs> right <up under> the <laughs> breast. And you need to find out that personal trainers are bipolar because they're so nice to get you to sign up, but evil as hell once you start working out with <laughs> And my personal trainer is a white lady, and I preface that by saying because She's the coolest person I know on this planet that says a lot of things to me she believes are motivational, inspiring, and encouraging, and an ad. I was working out with her before I left to come here, and she was like, Jay, I'm going to have you beat, have you whipped into shape, pick up that medicine ball, it's light like cotton. How do you feel? <sighs> Kunta, Kunta Kentes. <sighs> the hell with it, Toby, I quit. That's a rude joke for those that didn't catch on. <laughs> You'll figure out next February during Black History Month. <laughs> Even though it's only like eight of us here in the neighborhood. <laughs> Speaking of Black History Month, a lot of people still complaining about it. You got black people complaining it's too short, then you got some white people who complain it's too long. I was at a show and told that joke, and I had a white lady stand up in the middle of the show and said, y'all just got 29 days this year. Bitch, why are you counting the calendar? <laughs> but then I had to do some research for myself to figure out why is Black History Month in the shortest month of the year? And I found this out. The person who made the calendar was a genius because they realized if Black History Month went any longer, it would go out of February and hit March and run into St. Patrick's Day and shit would get real. <laughs> real quick. <laughs> Because you can't put, potentially, drunk black people and drunk Irish people together in the same month. It's an explosive situation. Because historically, when black people get drunk, we get violent. And historically, when Irish people get drunk, <laughs> same exact thing. It's an explosive situation. That's like throwing a lit cigarette in front of two homeless people in a parade route. <laughs> 
my basketball fans. That's like putting Reggie Miller and Cheryl Miller in a closet with a bad chick and say, you two fellas have fun. <laughs> Or that's like McDonald's having this glorious idea to put the McRib and the Shamrock Shake together in a value meal. Sure, the shit may sound good at 11.30 at night, but two hours later, your stomach's having a goddamn race war. Now, you don't know whether the Soul Train line or the river dance to the bathroom. You just gotta get it. Shit. Shit. I can't get the key to the door. It's not a good combination. I'm too big to be up here Riverdale so like that. <laughs> but I work out for a lot of reasons because I have a kid that I'm actually in his life. <laughs> yeah. Actually in his life. I'm a proud, part, proud parent of an eight-year-old that I know he's mine because the test proved it. <laughs> but I love my son to death. I love him to death. My son is smart and a smart ass. He gets the smart part for me. And I don't like to crack jokes with him, so I called him on the phone one day. I was like, Jay. Your head's so big, it's like a bowling ball. My eight-year-old son responds, Danny, your head's so big, it's got some atmosphere. <laughs> okay, y'all thought that was funny with my pride, sir. <laughs> so my response, without thinking, and having my pride in the way to my eight-year-old son was, that's why your mama ain't shit. <laughs> I didn't realize what I said, so all of a sudden I hear in the background, <laughs> So now I'm trying to explain to an eight-year-old what I really meant to say, but my pride is in the way, so I'm saying, wait, what's that? I'm like, no, your mama do man ain't shit. No, your mama don't know who other than daddy is. Shit. No. Look, put your mama on the phone. I know my son's bad son. I hate when you got bad ass kids out there. They don't know about it. I was at the laundry man. This little black girl grabbed a little brother. was like, Trey Beyonce. Who the hell is name Trey Beyonce? She's like, Trey Beyonce, come on, let's play Section 8. What in the hell is Section 8? <laughs> so I'm sitting there being nosy. She was like, well, she said, this is how we're going to play it. I'm going to play the caseworker. You play mama's boyfriend. And you run and go hide like you're not supposed to be here. Oh, shit. That's my time. My name is Jay Washington. You all have been great, y'all. Jay Washington, y'all, hell yeah.